Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 5-28-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 112. And um, we, I have arrived at the next project uh, to-do list. Uh, we'll go through the intro and uh, cover a little bit, and uh, I'll show you, I'll showcase to you what I got done for today. Uh, intro says, at this point, you've already had a fair amount of practice using the various techniques we've shown you. But we've been throwing around a lot of information your way. So before we move on, we're going to take a minute to slow down and work on one more great portfolio project. And uh, this one I'm going to put a lot of effort into. Um, I, I just, when I was reading through the introduction and the to-do to list, this is a very popular one, as we'll read here in a moment. And I feel like this could be, I mean, they all really could be. But I feel like this project could be one that, that, uh, I put in my portfolio so I want to do a really good job on it uh, all the way around so this one may be a little bit longer we'll see uh, it was just an initial thought I had but it says uh, to-do lists are a staple in beginning web dev tutorials because they can be very simple there is however a lot of room for improvement and many features that can be added before diving into the code take a minute to think about how you're going to want to organize your project and that's uh, I took that as writing some pseudocode on paper, which I've done, and I'll go over that, even though it's probably the boring part because you can't see my see my uh, tablet that I'm writing on, piece of paper, but that's okay. First section, uh, sub one, your to-dos are going to be objects that you'll want to dynamically create, which means either using factories or constructors, constructors classes to generate them. Number two, brainstorm brainstorm what kind of properties your to-do items are going to have. At a minimum, they should have a title, description, due date, and priority. You might also want to include notes or even a checklist. Three, your to-do list should have projects or separate lists of to-dos. When a user first opens the app, there should be some sort of default project to which all of their to-dos are put. Users should be able to create new projects and choose which projects their to-dos go into. And then goes into dom stuff after that and that's kind of where i stopped taking notes and the only reason why i call the only reason why i'm telling you all and reading all four of these all at once uh not that i got through all of them because that's not the case but just that's kind of how i wrote my pseudocode out up to the dom stuff basically so um basically in a nutshell my my pseudocode ha i have here before I even do any of this, um, there's an assumption here I think that the top has that I wanted. This is the purpose of today's video is to set up the GitHub account as we've done hundreds of times and then set up Webpack. Um, today's project video is uh, is pretty much showcasing getting Webpack set up and how I did it. It may not be the best way. It's not the only way. It's just the way I did it. Um, so if you're following along, you can kind of mimic mine if you'd like. It's totally up to you, however you do it. Uh, so I put a note of you know, set up the GitHub, set up the Webpack, and then key, a key idea to keep in my mind throughout the whole project with the solid principles is single responsibility and modulating my code as much as possible. And so with that thought, I have a to-do uh, that I want to create, uh, an empty to-do array, and I want to create that with a factory, uh, factory function, but add in properties like title, and I have... I've chosen so far, at least on paper, title, description, due date, priority, and checklist. And those are going to be one module, and I think I'm going to title it uh, create to do as a function inside of Webpack as a module file. And then I have another module file that I think I'm going to create secondarily inside of Webpack called blank project load. And that's going to be, uh, that's going to basically create a separate project array with a default initial load empty um, that will be empty initially as per the instructions I, I just read that's kinda why I read the requirements out to you and then the user uh, creates a new project and puts to do's in it um, that part is also going to be a modulated j separate JavaScript uh, file called I think I'm gonna call it project project uh, create project uh, function and another that's modulated file and maybe have that also do where the user can see their projects and move to do's around I put that as a question mark because it doesn't necessarily say you need to do that in this project at least not as far as I read 
And then I have DOM stuff at another module file called load DOM in, uh, in, within Webpack. So that's the initial 30,000 foot thought. Uh, obviously all that's subject to change. So with that said, um, get out of the boring talk here and just show you what I've done. So I've, I've set up my uh, GitHub account or my GitHub project and pulled it down. I'm not going to go over that because I've been over that several, several times. So we're going to focus uh, in this video on setting up Webpack. And so um, here, here we go. So let's just hit the editor. So you create, I'm trying to do this in a way that makes sense, kind of how I flowed with it. So I created my HTML file um, and created a di first I created the dist folder, created the source folder, I created the index.html file. Here's your boilerplate. I put the script tag in the bottom here. Remember to keep that at the bottom so it's process last for main.js so Webpack can compile your code. And then just like last time, I'm just kind of mimicking for right now just to get things started. I create a div instead of, uh, instead of ID. I did class because I like to use classes instead. So I have a class of content, uh, content div in there. And then uh, main.js was uh, obviously the compile. I've already compiled my webpack, so that created that. And then in the source, I have my index.js that I created. A git ignore is outside the source. So only thing in source is the index.js. And what I did here is I just did some testing. Console.log testing index.js webpack commented it with testing out webpack initial setup of index.js and then testing out the dom minip via webpack i created the uh hit content uh, constant this will probably all be deleted i'm just going through it with you real quick uh content div just like last time in the in the restaurant uh project we just got done doing i'm query selecting the content um, class and then i'm attaching the uh, test h1 to it creating an element of h1 and then putting the text content hello world test from webpack index.js dominip and then appending that to content div so that's that's what that does and then i also created a git ignore uh, at, at the parent level um, we didn't go over this last time i talked about it but i don't know if i showed you but so the git ignore i think i said it was a folder last time it incorrectly said that it's a file dot if you type in dot git ignore no spaces. It'll create a file that Git Git will understand. It's got that Git icon there, and then you type it. You just simply type in the folder you or files you want it to ignore, and it won't push or pull. So I have an ignore node underscore modules, which is this folder here that gets created when you uh, run Webpack. So I'm kind of going a little bit out of order here because this stuff wouldn't have been created yet. But um, your dot it, your dot Git ignore you can create at any time. It doesn't have to be before or after um, when that's created, uh, when your other files are created. <clears throat> I have a license file here. This just came out of, uh, I just chose to add a uh, license file to my Git project before I, uh, GitHub project before I cloned it down locally. And this is just the MIT license. I didn't type that in. And then um, there was a readme. And then, so following along kind of, with the um, using this uh, webpack getting started document uh, first uh, hit the command line there and um, I ran the init y to we went through showcase that in the last video so I'm not going to do that again I didn't use the switch y I just did npm init went through the initial um, uh, questions to create the json file which then creates this so that's what you can end up with after you if you hit all the defaults and you've already do that after you've already pulled down your local say so it pulls up your repo correctly um, and then after that is done you do the install so that's why you got your dependencies set set here uh, because you uh, you run the npm install webpack webpack cli save dev when you run that it installs the two dependencies to your webpack that are necessary to for this to work and then it appends your um, your package.json with those two and that'll be it for that file and then here's how it's, it's showing you basically starting to create your project directory which we already went over 
um, skipping that part because we're not needing to do that for for this example um, adding the script that the uh, index.js even though we we chose main because this is a just a getting sorry example we're gonna do a bundler so uh, and you don't have to change private to true because we're we are uh, that's only if you don't want to publish but we are publishing to our github so we don't want to put that in there so here's create a bundle so I so instead of creating the index.html <coughs> excuse me at the root you create it uh, inside a dist so did that as I showed you we aren't installing lodash so we skip that so again it's kind of a customized flow workflow here skipping that because we're not doing anything with lodash here's where you add your script tag for main which we already did and then you run the webpack so at this point you run npx webpack and that builds everything so at this point you then get your node modules created um, your uh, your packages get created and then at that point you then create uh, your webpack config config js file and you basically copy and paste this into it so that creates this here and then I added mode colon production here after I cop after I pasted that other code in there this isn't included but what this does is gets rid of those warnings if you remember seeing all the warnings on my previous uh, project with regards to mode this uh, sets it as production officially so it gets rid of that warning again the warning doesn't really hurt anything I just got sick of seeing it uh, because if you don't put anything in mode it will default to production as I read in the documentation and um, so that's that and then uh, you can alternately run npx webpack dash dash config dot webpack dot js config dot js if you want to but it does say tip by default it does look for webpack dot config dot js to use and it will automatically use that um, without doing any type of switch which I didn't because I did confirm that it does work so basically you, they're just showing you this that you can use the config switch if you have a mul you want to use multiple config files for more complex deployments or you wanted to call your webpack something else because if you do like webpack dot John .config .js, it won't see that because by default webpack's only looking for this exact syntax of webpack.config.js for a file name so that's that skipping npm scripts because I'm running a watcher as we talked about in last video and that's what um, this first window is here as you can see I have no current errors I'm running npx webpack dash dash watch and that's running that listener in the background that watcher file that's updating anytime there's a change and you would see the warnings before but since I put the new mode in there of production it's not giving me any errors it's nice and clean see it's compiled the source correctly so after you run webpack after you run npx webpack the first time it, that part will build the main.js file that it needs it will read it from index.js and uh, index.html as we've learned before and and it also reads from the webpack file config file we have up here and so when you run all that and compile it throw this uh, in the browser the index.html and you will get this so on the index.html also I changed the um, title the to do web list web app just just for now it sounded good so that's what the tab says to do list web app hello world testing webpack dot index .js dominant so I can I pr proved myself that that's working and that's coming through and reading fine from the index.js we have no modulars yet we have no CS yet we haven't got there this is just strictly getting webpack set up and you see the console.log in here testing index.js webpack so we see that all that functionality is working as intended and so that is how that's wired up I don't think I missed anything it's very important that you set up your git ignore like this because if you don't the first time you do your push which I've already done so as you'll see here you see uh, all this stuff being pushed up 28 minutes ago hour ago whatever so the hours my initial commit 
and about 26 minutes ago I did the in, my first push to keep organized so after I completed all my web packs initialization and set up making sure all that works then I uh, pushed it to up to my github um, if you don't put this git ignore in here what I was saying a moment ago um, it will push up node modules which is an insane amount of data and it will clutter up your let me look at all this it's, and it's all got subfolders inside of it it's all the dependencies that you can use within webpack of which right now we're using none of them but um, you don't there's no need to you know push and pull those all it's going to do is mess up your messy up your uh, your github account so ignoring it just means it push pulls it does not mean if you're not well versed in git ignore it does not mean that y your webpack or anything like that is ignoring it that's just for github push pulls so uh, everything will function correctly as you see it's functioning correctly right now with no errors um, and webpack's working great so it's just for push pulls for github so that's it um, so I won't make this video any longer it needs to be. Next time we'll be going into um, the uh, my pseudocode more. I'm going to start writing out the uh, probably the create to do as a module. So I'm thinking I again I saw a subject to change, but I'm thinking I'm going to create a new module inside a source here and call it. Um, you know create to do or something like that and build that module out and try to make this as modular modular as possible with my JavaScript and also so it can be extensible and trying my best to use single responsibility principles so um, with that said uh, please like share and subscribe and let me know in the comments section how you guys are getting getting it on with this project and until next time with all that said, until next time, say ya.